brought to you by Hula Frog, local things for kids to do. HulaFrog.com. Hello, and thanks for watching Illusionist Michael Howell Live. I'd like to thank our sponsor, Hula Frog. I'd also like to thank our sponsor, our guest sponsor, Macaroni Kid. Another special thanks to Williams Magic Shop, Mildred and Dildred, and Arizona Families. Thank you so much, guys. Um, if you guys want to find out what supplies you're going to need, you can go to IllusionistMichaelHowell.com, click the Illusionist Michael Howell Live link, and then it's going to be at the top of that page, everything you're going to need for each episode. I got better about it and put it on uh, the uh, website. So I'm going to show you guys a card trick. I'm going to need an assistant. So Jerrica, if you can come up here. Uh, and I'm apologizing for the camera work this episode. It's a little <laughs> crooked because my tripod is uh, broken and the other one yeah. I have... <laughs> we couldn't get to. Uh, so I apologize about that right now. Okay, so I need you to uh, put down, pick nine cards out of the pile. I'm just set them here. It could be any nine cards. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to be the top. Or it could be the top. It's fine. <laughs> Anything really doesn't matter. Five. Seven, eight, nine. Okay, so then we're going to put these over here. Now take the cards and make uh, make three piles. So just keep going. There should be three cut piles of three. All right, pick a pile. That pile. All right. So turn it around. Show it off to the camera. What is it? It's a joker. Oh, it's a joker. Oh, okay. Of diamonds. Joker of di It's a joker of diamonds. <laughs> All right, piling this here. Okay, now I'm gonna make uh, spell out Joker, I guess. J, uh, Jack, J A C K. Oh, uh, uh, Jack. <laughs> I'm tired. That was a, it. Was a Joker? It's a, I think it was a Jack because it had the diamonds. It was a Joker. Oh yeah, it was a Jack. You are. Because it, it had the diamonds. We're both tired. All right, so spell Jack. J, A, C, K. O-F-D-I-A-M-O-N-D-S. Ladies and gentlemen, that is not a diamond, <laughs> but it is a jack. That's because we need magic. Ready? M-A-G-I-C. Ladies and gentlemen, jack uh. diamonds. Not a joker. She was right. That was funny because I didn't even look. I... Yeah. I figured you would know how to read the cards. Well, so. they have the big there you go. symbol in the middle. At least they knew what was going on. All right, guys. We're going to move on. Um, Jack Joker, close enough. Upcoming <laughs> events. We're working on a big Halloween event. We'll get you more information on that the next episode. Okay, guys? Um, so we're going to do a, an experiment um, with... You're going to need a glass of water. You're gonna need a, an actual egg, a real egg. You might want to boil the egg. Might make it a better experiment. You're gonna need to really use up that toilet paper as fast as you can because you need a toilet paper roll. And you're gonna need a pie tin. So go buy a pie, eat it, and then you can do this experiment. Hopefully it's a pumpkin pie because that's my favorite pie. Okay, so you're gonna put the pie pan, pie pan. Say that three times. So it's pie pan, pie 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 pie. pie. <laughs> it's hard to say. All right, there. And you're gonna put the, the toilet paper roll on top. And then you're gonna put the egg on top. Do you stand it up? Oh, oh, it goes in there, just like that. And then what's gonna happen is on the count of three, you're gonna hit the pie, pie, pie pan. Oof, easy for me to say, guys. I need to get some sleep. Uh, and then the egg is going to drop into the glass. Now we're gonna bring on a beautiful assistant to demonstrate, Jerrica. All right, hopefully this works. We all know how good she is at magic. <laughs> All right, ready? One, two, three. Look at that, guys. <laughs> the egg. And you guys can do this. It doesn't take any skills. Although, I'm afraid to do it. <laughs> I kind of want to try it, though. Can you get the egg out of there? Now, the trick is getting the egg out of there without spilling the water. So, this just goes to show you that you may have to use a bunch of eggs to try this experiment because you may be like me. Okay? The egg may crack. But that's why I told you to get two dozen eggs. <laughs> Alright, you just hit it like that? Yeah. Oh god, guys. Ready? And just hard? Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> oh my god, that's so cool! <laughs> Try that at home, guys. That's pretty nifty. Oh man, that's so cool. Alright, guys. 
So that was neat. Uh, I'm so excited, it's interview time. We have uh, owner of Invisible Theater, uh, all around entertainer, actress, performer, uh, Tucson legend, New York legend, amazing person. Please welcome to the Magical TV, Susan Clausland. Hi guys, we have Susan with us. How are you doing, Susan? Hi, uh, great to see you. Thank you so much. You're doing such great things, Michael. Thanks so much. Thanks so much for coming on. Um, so everybody's probably wanting to know this. What got you into show business? Well, I was very shy as a child. And my best friend across the street in New Jersey was taking dramatic lessons at Mrs. Rudolph's Dramatic School on top of the movie theater in Maplewood, New Jersey. And I wanted to be with my best friend. So I took dramatic lessons there. And um, people don't believe that at one time I was very shy, but I think you can say that about so many actors. Don't yeah. you? I, I, I actually, I just that. interviewed Kevin Johnson and he said the exact same thing. Yeah. Um, he said that what got him through was acting and the use of puppets ah. <laughs> from an acting teacher, which is something that I have found to bring, you know, uh, absolutely. To a lot of people. So yeah. that's awesome. Um, uh, what do you like most about the business? I think the people and the interaction, you know, Invisible Theater got its name from that invisible energy that flows between performers and an audience that makes the magic of theater. And it's that magic that keeps us going that can never be replaced. It's that communal of being in an audience with other people and performers on stage. And you just feel it, you just yeah. feel it. And that keeps the drive going. You know, it's so weird right now, like because of most of the stuff is online, you can't get that connection or that feeling, which is. And that's why it's been so important for me as the titular artistic head of Invisible Theater to find a way. We've always been about what we can do and not dwelling on what we can't do. So right. what we did early on is we put whatever little money we had into making our venue as safe as possible. We got the ionizer for the air conditioner. We blocked off seating. We did everything possible so that an audience would feel safe. And we actually uh, did 10 performances in June with 22 people in the uh, and people came, it was sold out. It was wow. sold out. And mainly it was people who were of the vulnerable age who yeah. said, we feel so safe coming. And that to me was the most rewarding moment. Mm -hmm. When I look back on this time, yes, I helped to make masks and yes, I gave blood, but to have opened our theater and to have provided that and the comments that the audience gave about, thank you so much we're out, we feel safe. You know, the, the goddess was looking down because the show translated to um, a reimagined chamber piece. So the actors felt great. They were six to eight feet away from each other. They were eight to 12 feet away from the audience. And it translated perfectly into a contactless kind of experience that was fully realized. That is awesome. Yeah, I forgot you. You are the only theater other than you know Gaslight's doing the big like driving yeah. thing. We were the only indoor, and we're going to do this again in September. Our <laughs> fingers are crossed that, given you know everything as we know can change in a heartbeat. But yeah. <laughs> that being said, we hopefully are going to have encore performances of filming O'Keefe opening September first with the same thing: twenty-two people, reserve seating. Um, great. Coming in, you know, both doors, no lingering, no lobby, no concessions, no intermission, but we say yes to live performance. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I, I've been trying to find a way personally um, to do, you know, the live thing. Um, mm -hmm. so the, the way that I've been able to do it is just uh, when people hire me, I perform outside. Yeah. Uh, and I literally perform out of the vehicle. <laughs> yeah. And wear a yeah. face mask, and that's one way that... Um, 
I could do that. So it's cool that you, you know, can do that. I know my family's theater has been having a struggle just because I know I've been talking stuck in the mall. And, yeah. no, I, and they can't, you know, they're the same with the burger, you know, it's up to the state, it's up to the mall to dictate. Mm -hmm. We fortunately have wonderful landlords who are happy that we're investing money in our space yeah. so we can, and, and of course, everybody has to be masked the whole time. So it's really um, quite a different, but exciting way yeah. to be able to continue in it. You know, we were one of the few that uh, were cited in the New York Times. I don't know if you saw that. I saw that, congratulations. But, yeah, you know, and it was just because we were trying okay. and safely. All Our right. actors felt safe. They came in their clothes. They never, you know, no one touched their props but them. Right. So the, and everybody, thank God, is healthy. Our audience is healthy. We had complete records so we could trace anything. And we will continue in this vein because that's what we are about is live theater. And the thing is, in this time and or in any time of depression or, or sadness, a lot of people um, crave that live entertainment and that yeah. live performance. Now, this is kind of an off question. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, uh, you're in the theater what's your favorite i would say broadway show but do you have a favorite show in general i would say the last show i did <laughs> which would be becoming dr ruth which was such a uh it was uh the last show uh that uh was fully realized on our it stage because we closed the end of february after a holdover um and so everybody was feeling really high. It was the best box office we had ever done. And people loved the show. And what an honor. And what an inspiring story at any time to tell Dr. Ruth's story. It was terrific. <laughs> and um, so that probably was one of the highlights. One of, growing up in New Jersey and my parents, it was very important uh, for them to expose us to cultural events. I actually saw as a child, the original West Side Story, wow. which was amazing. And I also saw as a child, Mary Martin doing Peter Pan and I oh clapped my, my little hands and I believe, and I believe, I think we all need to do that now. We believe, we believe. <laughs> we do believe. Wow, you know, it's funny, Mary Martin. So that movie, they did a movie like recording of that. Yeah. And growing up as a child, that was to me the only Peter Pan that ever existed. <laughs> I, I agree. You know, I mean, I can sort of look at the, but not really, because it was always Mary Martin yeah. as Peter Pan. Yeah. It's so weird too. Like I know, well, there's a lot of things like now that we know that kids growing up, unfortunately, you know, with the time, changing times, they're not going to see the same things that we got to see. Like another thing, sidetracking, circus. They're not gonna know what a circus is anymore. I so. know. I mean, we would go to the circus at, at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, it's my so parents would take us into the circus at Madison Square Garden. In fact, the only I, I hesitate to say this, living in Tucson, but the only, <laughs> maybe I'll say it as the first rodeo I ever attended was at Madison Square Garden. Wow, that's yeah. so cool. Yeah. It's just, but it's amazing how the world just changes and, you know, we kind of have to all kind of go with it. Um, and speaking but, of, the you know, your family situation, I know, you know, having the privilege of uh, knowing how you grow, grew up, it's, it was the same. It was in a world of culture and the realization of how important the arts are in such a positive, positive way. So, uh, definitely. <laughs> Uh, I definitely had a, a real creative upbringing. It was funny because a lot of kids, you know, have video games and I, we had creativity. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of, I'm lucky. I should thank my parents that they didn't get me in all the video games and all that because yeah. um, creativity is, is important. Uh, so with this pandemic and everything going on, it, you've already kind of answered it, you know, a little bit, but how are you getting through? I know you got the theater and, you did all that stuff to it, the construction. Uh, and then what do you have coming up uh, in the future? Yeah, well, you know, um, I learned a new skill, juggling many balls in the air. So maybe you'll hire me for your next show. There you, go. you know, it's, it's constant. You know, I always say it's much more challenging to be an optimist 
than to be a pessimist. <laughs> and But that's the only way I want to live and the only way the theater wants to move forward. And this is our 50th anniversary this wow. year. Can you Congratulations. imagine? That's yeah. Amazing. So it's a kind of a, not how we imagined it, but it's how we will continue it. And uh, we're very excited that we are 10 performances, encore performances. We call it our 49th and a half season that we're bringing back filming O'Keefe. We have a stellar cast that'll be for two weeks uh, in September. Uh, again, fingers crossed, everything uh, is okay by the city and the state and the CDC. And then a wonderful piece, it's called Red, White, and Blacklisted. It's about Dalton Trumbo. Oh, Dalton yeah. Trumbo was part of the Hollywood 10 who were blacklisted. And it was important um, for me to do a piece in the fall that celebrated our democracy. It uh, embraced democracy. It helped us uh, realize how precious and fragile democracy is and it requires all of us to participate. Again, this was what was originally scheduled. I'm not like redoing it. Um, and it's only two actors, two marvelous actors, Damien Garcia and David uh, Alexander Johnston. One plays the son Christopher uh, Trumbo and one is Dalton Trumbo and they're basically his letters. So they're on opposite sides of the stage. You don't have to reimagine this one. And again, no intermission, which is key in, in right. this whole rethinking of how we can do theater. So we're very excited about that. Um, and then, you know, we're moving forward with, uh, with the season. We might uh, extend our celebration to go through 2021 all the way through. Right. Uh, just to help facilitate more participation with the limited seating. And again, you know, some things are scheduled for venues that we don't control. So we're dependent uh, on how those will open and with the number of seats. Gotcha. I understand that. I, I've had a few shows <laughs> <the> <laughs> no, you that, <laughs> that could have happened no, you because didn't. of yeah. the whole thing. In fact, the Fox had to reschedule my magic show for 2021. And, and off showbiz, my fiance and I are supposed to be getting married in December, and we just had to postpone it. So, yeah, uh, things are just kind of, you know, moving. And that's why we say, in all, and, and this has been very gratifying too, that our patrons have said that our messaging has been very clear and succinct. And that's why they feel safe coming uh, to us, which is great. Or if they don't feel safe yet, they're still saying, thank you for doing something. Thank you for working hard. We will be back. And we've changed our ticketing also to flex pass only. We're not offering a traditional season ticket. Wow. And we're not announcing uh, people can't sign up way ahead of time because the dates might change. So we're announcing per show, giving people a flex pass first opportunity to book because they're 22 seats. It's, and we're limiting... Wow. <laughs> the number of flex passes because we feel it's a, a moral uh, obligation not to take money for something we know we can't achieve and what we're offering we know we can given everything is working correctly that's so cool that you get to offer live performance and, and have that outlet for people to go to i know with our theater we uh, just met yesterday we're gonna be announcing some things so hopefully uh we'll get the yeah. ball that I, I talked to uh you know brandon <laughs> so we periodically touch base on things and whatever we can you know lend our support to i'm happy to um and i said this to uh cindy at rogue too you know to take people through the steps that we did you know, kind of give a give a tour that way safely, yeah. distanced, no hugs, <laughs> um, uh, masked, but we can show you how we did it right. and see how that would translate to how you're doing it. And, you know, and the things, you know, more power to whatever anyone's trying. To me, interviews work great on Zoom. I'm not really interested for me to do Zoom theater. 
Right. But this works great. I am doing a couple for Edith Head, which I have been doing, which has been Zoom um, with Kimberly Truler, who's a, a film historian, uh, new book coming out on film noir, has worked everywhere. So we did one for her, uh, Glamour Moore is her site. We did for the National Arts Club, mm. broke all attendance on, online, 3,000 people. Yeah. Wow. which is amazing. <laughs> um, and now a new one is coming up August, uh, which will be before this airs, but maybe you can come on uh, Edith Head and the uh, Hitchcock Blondes, which will be great about Hitch and uh, Edith's relationship with, because she designed for all of the Hitchcock Blondes. Right. So you've got Tippy and you've got Grace Kelly and you've got Doris Day. So it's really a, a wonderful, and it's done in such a great way. You know, this is our brand. Invisible mm -hmm. Theater wouldn't be for 50 years if we didn't have quality. So whatever we do, just like you, whatever we do, it has to have that quality. So I thank you for doing this. I thank you for inviting me on. Thank you so much. Uh, Ed, just uh, one last thing. Uh, what would be your advice to somebody that's a child, a youth, uh, youth uh, to, the, to somebody in this world like that wants to go and be a performer? Like, Keep the dream happening. You know, the, there's no reason. Watch, be invested in the world. You'll use everything. I, I remember, you know, early days when I was uh, directing at Pima, and I, and there was a, a a rally for Take Back the Night. I canceled rehearsal so we could go down to the rally <laughs> because it's very important to embrace anything that's happening in the world. It will always inform your work if you are curious if you are dedicated, if you're more interested in being an artist rather than being famous. I agree. Uh, and then where can people find out information about you? Uh, they can find invisibletheater.com. We're on Facebook, we're on Instagram. Uh, the same, our website is up and running. For Edith Head, the same, Susan Clausen in a conversation with Edith Head. Uh, edithhead.biz is uh, Edith's website. She'll be back during our 50th. We're hoping for March. Uh, right, Miss Head adores the Invisible Theater. <laughs> so next to Hollywood, she loves being in Tucson. There you go. Well, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, we look forward to seeing your performances in the future. Thank you so much, Michael. You are a treasure and just doing a valiant job on keeping the arts alive. Thank you so much. You take care. Uh, okay, so I met Susan Clausen. I said her name weird when I introduced her. She'll probably just laugh. Um, I'm bad with names, guys. I'm sorry. This is why I can never be a principal or anyone that would have to uh, announce a graduating class because I'd mess up every single name. Okay, I have an animal rescue called Rose Ranch Animal Rescue. We rescue a bunch of animals. If you'd like to find out more information, you can go to illusionsmichaelhowell.com and click the Rose Ranch Animal Rescue link or just scroll down on the Illusions Michael Howell live page and there's some information there. Okay, guys, it's that time where we get to tell the worst jokes you've ever heard. And I'm going to let you know these are going to be egg-cellent jokes. Ah, I get it, because we just did a... Yeah. Experiment with an egg. There are, in fact, all these jokes are going to be egg jokes. So, here we go. The yolk's on you. Okay, this, those aren't written down, guys. I'm just making those up. Okay. <laughs> what, <laughs> what day do eggs hate most? What day do eggs hate most? Friday. Get it? Because <laughs> they get fried. <laughs> Okay, how do comedians like their eggs? How do comedians like their eggs? <laughs> Funny side <laughs> up! <laughs> okay, why can't... Oh, oh, why can't you tease egg whites? Why can't you tease egg whites? Why can't you tease egg whites? Because they can't take a yolk. <laughs> <laughs> that was just as bad as the other ones I made. Okay, where did the one-legged... One-legged? Where did the one-legged pirate go for breakfast? Where did the one-legged pirate go for breakfast? I hop! <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was my last joke. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all flipping it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh. 
Oh, I'm cracking myself oh. up. Oh, man. Next week, guys, we have a special guest, Frank Powers. Uh, he does a lot of different things. He's, he's on the radio. Uh, he draws cartoons. He's got a comic book mobile that travels. A uh, very talented man. He does a, lot, a man of many skills. He does a lot of things. So uh, be sure to tune in for Frank Powers in the next episode. Have a great day, guys.